Welcome to the Telebs Optical Land video series, Fundamentals Upon. This video is on the Optical Land solution. The purpose of this video is to provide a technical overview on PON and its application in the optical land. This video will define the passive optical network and compare it to the more traditional Ethernet network. The topics covered in this video will be a brief introduction to PON and its many advantages, a deep dive into how PON works, and a comparison of PON to traditional Ethernet LANs. PON, or Passive Optical Network, is a data transfer technology that is used to provide connectivity in the enterprise LAN. The LAN that uses PON is referred to as Optical LAN. The Optical LAN solution relies heavily on fiber optics to provide data connectivity from the core of the LAN to the edge with no electronic components in between. For this reason, PON can provide many benefits to the enterprise LAN. PONs use fewer routers and switch ports, less cabling, and passive fiber splitters, which can reduce operational costs. PONs can also offer higher speeds at lower cost per megabit than copper-based services. PONs use fiber optic cables that are more reliable than other technologies. Fiber is smaller, lighter, more flexible, and easier to route through buildings than other types of cabling. Because fiber optic cables don't require electricity, they're also immune to electrical interference and static. PONs can transmit data at 10 gigabits per second and higher in the future. This can be especially beneficial for businesses with high download and upload demands. PONs can support connectivity to devices that are sometimes inaccessible to traditional networks. PONs point to multi-point structure can also expand much faster than other network topologies. PONs eliminate the need for equipment closets, cooling infrastructure, or mid-span electronics, which can simplify infrastructure and make them easier to maintain. Passive optical LAN uses a centralized layer 2 switch called an optical line terminal or OLT. The OLT has a broad distribution of thousands of Ethernet ports for network devices. However, these ports do not reside on the OLT. Instead, these ports are on remote devices called optical network terminals, installed strategically in the network where Ethernet drops are needed. Connectivity between the OLT and ONT is established using a point-to-multipoint fiber infrastructure called the Optical Distribution Network, or ODN. A single PON interface at the OLT will support several ONTs. Each PON can handle up to 512 Ethernet ports. The ODN can stretch up to 12 miles and consists completely of passive optical components. A single fiber from the OLT's PON interface is introduced to an optical splitter. The optical splitter is a simple fiber optic element that allows a signal from the OLT to pass through and is distributed to all ONTs connected to it. Splitters come in a variety of mounting options and configurations. Since they have no electronic components, they need no consideration for electrical or environmental needs. Traffic is passed between the OLT and ONT using a PON encapsulation method. Ethernet packets that arrive at the OLT are sent to the destination by packaging them as PON packets. The packet is then sent downstream on the designated PON interface and broadcast to the ONTs. ONTs that are not the destination for the packet will discard the packet. The destination ONT will convert the packet to Ethernet and send it to the appropriate port. All downstream traffic is sent using a specified wavelength designated for downstream traffic. For upstream traffic back to the OLT, the ONT will take all received Ethernet packets and convert them to PON packets. Since upstream traffic is passively aggregated at the optical splitter, packets must be sent at specified time slots so that they do not collide in transit. Time slots are assigned dynamically based on the priority of the individual services on the ONT. PON uses 1,024 time slots per PON interface. Once PON traffic is received by the OLT, it is converted to Ethernet and processed. Since upstream and downstream traffic on the PON are using the same fiber path, ONTs will use a different wavelength signal upstream to differentiate it from the downstream traffic. 
The optical line terminal, or OLT, acts as the central aggregation element. It performs all processing, switching, filtering, and database storage. The OLT is located in the core data center and replaces multiple layer two switches. The OLT provides multiple PON interfaces to accommodate the specific needs of the enterprise and is expandable to meet future needs. The optical network terminal, or ONT, provides edge access ports for the network. ONTs are versatile in their installation and can be located in wall, ceiling, and desktop mounts, as well as equipment room installations. ONTs are not network devices and do not operate independently as layer two switches. They are strictly extensions of the operation of the OLT. As such, they do not require the same security measures used with traditional access switches. ONTs come in a variety of sizes, from two to 48 ports, depending upon the needs of the network. They can support both one gig and 10 gig devices. PON comes in different forms. PON protocols are unique in two ways, bandwidth and wavelength. The most common PON protocol is Gigabit PON or GPON. GPON was developed originally to support fiber to the home. It supports 2.4 gigabits downstream on the PON and 1.2 gigabits upstream. The wavelength used are 1490 nanometer downstream and 1310 nanometer upstream. To support the GPON interface, a dedicated GPON transceiver is used at the OLT along with the GPON ONT. A newer PON protocol is XGS PON. XGS PON supports up to 10 gigabits on the PON interface, both upstream and downstream. The wavelengths used for XGS PON are 1577 nanometers downstream and 1270 nanometers upstream. Like GPON, a dedicated transceiver and ONT are used for the XGS PON interface. All other elements of the interface are identical to GPON. This makes upgrading to higher speeds easier and less expensive as the ODN fiber infrastructure and the OLT stay the same. So how is the optical LAN solution different from copper-based Ethernet LAN? In traditional Ethernet LAN, distribution from the core of the network is routed to a secured equipment closet. Ethernet is terminated to a stack of independent access switches. These switches have a reach of only 100 meters to the Ethernet drop location. Each drop requires a CAT5 or CAT6 copper cable. In optical LAN, the equipment closet is not necessary. ONTs can be installed in a variety of ways. Most common, the ONT is installed in close proximity to the Ethernet drop location. Optical LAN has a much farther reach than traditional LANs. Also, there are fewer network elements to secure and manage. Because optical LAN relies primarily on fiber optic cable to implement, it bears noting the advantages of fiber over copper cabling. The starkest difference is bandwidth. Even though the Telabs optical LAN system can achieve up to 10 gigs on the pond, single mode fiber is capable of bandwidths in the terabits. And this is bandwidth that can be carried for miles. Copper ethernet cabling is typically constrained to less than 25 gig and 100 meters. Fiber cable is far less vulnerable than copper cable. Fiber is immune to electromagnetic and radio frequency interferences. Furthermore, it is nearly impossible to tap. Fiber has a much longer life cycle than copper. On average, there has been an upgrade to copper ethernet cable every two to four years. Cabling is replaced often to keep up with bandwidth and security demands. Fiber is also energy efficient. Energy consumption can be reduced to two watts per user port. Since fiber has this distinct advantage over copper, the advantages are compounded by taking the fiber as deep into the network as possible. This concludes this video. In it, we have discussed a brief introduction to PON and its many advantages, a deep dive into how PON works, and a comparison of PON to traditional Ethernet LANs.